Hey guys, what's going on? Jeremy Haynes. Today's video is a very simple video, short, sweet, direct, and it's about money mindset. A lot of people discount the fact that what happens up here, it correlates into all of our earning potential. And this specific lesson is very interesting. And it comes down to a comfort level that you achieve at a certain point financially that will sabotage you and your momentum and will likely pull you back down. I like to visualize this with a range, okay? Usually what I end up seeing is, I'll give you an example with a few different ranges so you can see for yourself, okay? I had a client recently, their range, their ceiling was about a 500K ceiling, okay? So 500K a month, every time that they would hit it, they would just come right back down again. And then when they'd come back down, they wouldn't ever go below a floor of about 300K a month. So the total range itself was about a 200K range. And this is typically how it looks because it's important to note, like this doesn't happen immediately. Like it's not like you just hit 500K a month and immediately go back down to, to 300. And every time you hit 300, you immediately go back up to 500. You'll be somewhere in between. And it takes like a, a few months, you know, for you to actually get to the point where you start to achieve like a greater level of financial income again. So like, you know, when I first found these guys, they were somewhere in between, let's say like 400, just for simplicity purposes. And we start the process of scaling and we, you know, we get to the point where they're like 450 and then they hit 500. And there was a very simple thing that occurred when they hit 500 the first time. Sales team got overwhelmed. And by overwhelmed, it's very important to disclose when I, when I correlate this all to money mindset, the sales team was not used to getting paid the amount that they would get paid above 500K a month. So the sales team would live very well if they closed 500k a month in deals and the way that they were paid and like the commission structure that they would pay would even pay them a little more if they hit 500k a month so essentially once they hit 500 everything from there it would take a little bit of time you know it'd like be a bullwhip effect but like the next month would come down and then the next month would come down and like you know essentially how it ended up looking is is it would just month over month over month be this pattern of i'll make i'll condense it down a little bit for you it'd be this pattern of like they'd hit 500 they'd come back down to 300 you know they'd kind of like come in between they'd hit 500 again come back down and this pattern like like this range, you know, this happened with me specifically being a consultant for them twice before I finally recognized what was happening. They were stuck in this specific cycle. First time it was, well, everybody got overwhelmed and everybody technically got overpaid, you know, and then pff, everything crashed back down. And then everybody got underpaid to a degree where it wasn't like uncomfortable and their financial life was downgrading to a point where they were like living in smaller houses or getting rid of cars or like stuff, you know, it was just enough to get everybody to kick back up into a higher gear again. And upon kicking back into that higher gear, the ceiling was always about 500k a month. So the second time they hit 500 a month is a different set of problems. It was a technical problem this time around. The technical problem was, well, they had a payment method verification that came on Facebook and almost all of the leads came from Facebook at this time for this specific company. So the second time around, it wasn't like a money mindset thing that prevented them from exceeding 500k. It was just unfortunately a tech glitch on Facebook that took weeks to solve that downgraded the revenue tremendously to about the same floor coincidentally. You know, what a coincidence. So the next time around, when we start pushing this thing back up again, and this is the most important thing about ranges, okay? So as I mentioned, they hit the 300K floor. They're at the point where, you know, they know that this is happening now. I call it out openly and I'm like, guys, like we, we can't keep letting this happen. You know, we have to break above this thing. So at the point they're at the 300K a month, you know, everything starts to come back up again. They hit 500K a month and on the path up is where the changes happen that get you past 500 a month or whatever your ceiling is. Not what you do when you're at the ceiling. What you do when you're at the ceiling is to a degree irrelevant. You know, you have to perpetuate something along the way that really just milks the momentum and extends it that much further, you know? Adds longevity to the just directional bias that the business is moving in, which is up and to the right financially, okay? So in this case, during this specific window where they're going from the 300K to the 500K month level again, that third time around, I'm calling it out like crazy, okay? I'm telling everybody, I'm like, first of all, we gotta be, all be hyper aware of it. You know, second of all, like sales team, you gotta be locked in. Marketing, like you guys gotta make sure that you guys have risk mitigation strategies in place, multiple ad accounts, like that's never happening again. Everything's warmed up. Business owner, like credit cards, they all need to be good to go. We need to have multiple credit card methods. Everything's gotta be good, okay? And this time around, like here's the scaling plan. So in this specific window, what I did that made the difference was I laid out a very clear mathematical projected out for like three months. Here's how we're going to incrementally push the business up. And I put anticipations into a calendar. So I, I literally broke down, you know, like a calendar view of what was going to happen and when. So everybody ahead of time could anticipate what was probable to occur and when it was probable to occur. This made a tremendous difference doing the scaling plan and just telling people, okay, so we're gonna spend more money every Sunday, okay? To be clear, every single Sunday that we spend more money, you know, that's gonna lead to like this amount of calls that happen on this day and 
you know, based on that quantity of calls, like hiring wise, you know, every other week, you're gonna need to hire somebody. And as long as you do that, then this goes incrementally from where we're at now to here to here, you know, and I just literally laid out all the way up for a three month duration of time in three months. I know this kind of sounds ridiculous, but it's not in three months, how they could go from 500 K a month to 2 million a month. If week over week, they were able to follow this scaling plan. Now, to be clear, the point I'm talking to you now, we're several, several weeks. Like I want to say like week six or week seven into the scaling plan. And it has been flawless. Quite literally this month, they're going to hit a million dollars a month or they're going to come just just shy of it at like 900K a month. And we'll see how it plays out. I'll let you know in a follow-up video. Now, to be clear, there was already one week out of these like six weeks that we've been following the scaling plan where the new setter and the new closer could not be hired in time according to the scaling plan. So we had to delay spending money one week additionally. Like we had to delay the scale one week to the following week. So instead of, you know, it being like a 90 day scaling plan now, now it's technically 97 days worth of a scaling plan. So my point being, it's like either way, every single person in the business has a very clear anticipated when what needs to occur projection okay that way it's not random this is the most important thing that happens when you have these like ceilings that you keep running into again okay? i know for a fact because this happens all the time you potentially sitting here watching this right now are dealing with this exact thing where you look at your revenue on a month over month basis and it just does not get past the same ceiling plus or minus like maybe tens of thousands of dollars if we're talking hundreds of thousands, it's plus or minus tens of thousands. If it's tens of thousands, we're talking a difference of thousands. It is a ceiling, like a literal ceiling. You just can't fucking push past it. I had a student recently, his ceiling was about 50K a month. So his floor was about 25K a month and his ceiling was about 50. And it was, it was a very repetitive pattern, just different. His pattern was, okay, I'm involved in the sales process. I'm doing sales calls if I'm this guy. I'm uh, you know, locked in if I'm at 25K a month. Like life for him really breaks down below this 25K a month level versus every time he gets to 50K a month, it's like life really opens up and everything changes in his habits and his patterns as an individual, his lifestyle. So he'd get to 50K a month doing sales calls, like putting in work, you know, and instead of taking the money when he's at 50K a month and essentially using it responsibly to grow the business, further, hiring additional people, you know, bringing in some additional sales staff, spending that additional money on ad spend to push it further. No, he would go fuck off and do lifestyle stuff. He lives over in Europe. He would travel over to different European cities and he would just fuck off. Like he would just take the money, him and his girlfriend would go. He has the type of girlfriend that like really, really wants to travel a lot. And so he feels a pressure to like maintain the relationship. He has to go and travel. And whenever he travels, as I'm sure most of you are familiar with, all of his productivity routines that are established based on his environment are just gone so everything's different you know and his girlfriend's sitting there pressuring him to like go explore the city and go eat and go like hike and go like look at tourist shit all day so his entire day-to-day -day routine changes whenever he hits 50k a month literally every time he hits that number schedules a trip him and his girlfriend go take like a week two weeks off and they just fuck off they just they just don't do anything essentially for that two weeks his total work volume will dramatically drop without an exact percentage let's just use the example his workload drops like 80 percent from what it was okay and you know as a result of of that there's this concept called the bullwhip effect so the bullwhip effect is like well initially whatever you think you got going on it doesn't have a lot of energy but then as time carries on it's like the energy of that specific action perpetuates gets greater in terms of its energy and its probability to devastate you or carry you to greater levels financially so initially it's like you know success and contraction are a lagging indicator and this, this is very important to note okay these variables of either expanding or contracting making more or making less, they lag, okay? They're always behind. They are never ahead. If I just stop pitching people for a month, I might not experience any contraction within that month. I might still get referrals. I might still get people that I previously pitched from the last several months that are responding, getting on sales calls and closing. So within that month, I'm thinking to myself, well, I stopped pitching people and I'm still getting deals. You know, maybe I don't need to pitch people as much. But in reality, it's like you're in that very first part of the bullwhip effect where you don't really notice, you know? And then what happens is you get to the second part of the bullwhip effect where you start to realize, oh shit, you know, from not pitching people like, now I don't have as many people getting on sales calls with me this month. You know, now I don't have as much revenue, new revenue coming in. And on top of that, like, man, I lost a deal or two. Like, I'm really feeling this, but you know, I'm still kind of fucking off. And then, man, the dramatic part happens where things unfortunately really take a toll and you recognize how fucked you are. And you know, you lose a bunch of deals. You don't have any new deals coming in. Everything contracts back down and you got to start the whole process.
process over again. And this is also a vice versa scenario to be clear. You can also go through a bullwhip phase where instead of a bunch of horrendous things happening to you, you know, you start pitching people, you start to spend more money on ads, you start to hire better people, you start to improve your operations, you start to, you know, retain more deals. It's like initially you're not going to notice shit. It's going to be like barely noticeable. And then in the second part of the phase, like you're going to really start to notice a lot of great things starting to happen. You know, you're going to start to see more revenue as a result of retaining more deals. You're going to start to see new clients as a result of spending more money and taking expansion oriented actions. And then you get to the very last part of the cycle where, you know, you really start to experience like more dramatic differences from all of these initial actions that started here at the very beginning and you just perpetuated it. So to be clear, and, and it's very important to note once again, like you can experience a lot of dramatic expansion and contraction through time that kind of seems random, but it's always correlated to something that happened like weeks ago or even months ago. It just depends on the speed in which your bullwhip takes effect on you and your business, okay? But for this particular guy, once again, like every time he would hit 50K a month, he would just go fuck off and do nothing. That would obviously in weeks and the months that followed lower his revenue tremendously, get him back down to 25K a month. He just kept following the same pattern. To be clear, and this is very important to note, when he finally started being self-aware and like articulating like, hey, you know, this keeps happening to me, I I don't even know how many times this, this exact cycle had happened to him. I won't make it up, but you know, he opened up to me about this cycle around 25K a month. And you know, he was like, man, this keeps fucking happening. And he almost articulated himself from a perspective of like, I don't know why, you know? He wasn't being self-accountable and just straight up saying like, look, I'm ruining my revenue potential every single time I go fuck off for one to two weeks. There's a level of accountability that's required when you're that type of person. So I just hold his feet to the flames, okay? I start lighting him up. I start incorporating a lot of my get richer talks and you know, ensuring that he understands like how important having so much more money than he currently has is. I start going through the process with him, just making him aware like, okay, how much monthly expenses do you have? He, he articulates like, you know, 15-ish to 20,000 a month in expenses. I asked him how much he had saved. He had about $100,000 saved. I said, okay, so if you keep doing this same cycle and things get a little worse the next time around and you have to start cutting into your savings, like, has that ever happened? He's like, yeah, you know, it does occasionally happen. And I'm like, have you ever broken 100K in savings? He's like, no, you know, like every time I fucking do, I just, I go spend it on, on the fuck off part of my cycle, you know? I just put it in perspective. I'm like, dude, if some kind of dramatic like medical issue happens to you where you don't have the ability to work or like your industry just completely goes under or, you know, God forbid, like something just happens where your, your ads no longer are effective and things just things just shut down for you. Like you got this many months to live on that savings and then you are fucked, you know? And that really wakes people up when you put it into that kind of perspective. Almost everybody, especially when they're operating at lower levels of revenue, even at that amount of money, you know, they're just, they're just operating on like a few months worth of leeway, you know, and 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 runway until they eventually just implode or, or they have to take on debt, you know, and burden themselves financially with paying back debt in those uncomfortable pin periods of time. My point being, after I really put it, put all this into perspective for him and just lit him up about why making so much more money than what he was currently making is not only important, but like literally critical for him and his future self, his family, like he's just being selfish right now is the perspective I gave him. And he needs to make a fuckload more money for the benefit of every single, every single person in his life and himself more importantly. It really woke him up, you know? And to be clear, as he started the process again of getting back up to the 50K a month level, this time around, he is self-aware that if he repeats the fuck off part of the cycle, mainly once again due to his girlfriend in this case, obviously he participates in it himself, but regardless, a lot of pressure from the girlfriend and that relationship dynamic they have. He can't do that this time around, you know? And if he does do it, he has to put in the same amount of work as if he was at 25K a month when he hits 50K a month and is trying to fuck off again. So my point being, every individual, every company has different reasons for why they fall into particular levels financially where they just can't break through. And there's a few very key things that I wanna make sure you walk away from this with if and when you go through those periods of time, okay? So remember, first of all, it's a game of self-awareness. What is specifically the pattern that causes the ceiling to remain a ceiling? There's always something. Even if it's a little different, like for the business that had a 500K a month ceiling, sure, the things that were at where their technical ceiling were only hit twice and they were different things both times, but that ceiling coincidentally still ended up being 500K a month. It was very coincidental that it was literally that amount, right? Weird. Now, when I, identified that and I just simply said, all right, we're going to put in a scaling plan. We're going to, we're going to just quantify the next three months of scaling. And we're going to quantify like what needs to happen when, and who needs to be hired when, and like just the quantity of calls that are going to come in and like the stats that need to be maintained and the KPIs that dramatically helped. Like I said, they're literally going to double what they did in the previous ceilings months in this month. Like they will hit 900 K at a minimum. They will likely exceed a million dollars this month. And 
quite on schedule, technically a little ahead of schedule, within that 90 day period of time, they're very probable to hit $2 million a month. And if and when they do, once again, I will quite literally make a video on the scaling plan so you guys can see it yourself. I say all this to let you know, even though it comes off as like, well, I mean, that's not really a pattern like the other guy. Like the other guy, he had the same pattern every time. Every time he'd make 500K a month, he would just go fuck off, you know? In both scenarios, the self-awareness is, well, we hit that ceiling every time regardless. So obviously there's some kind of limitation that exists there that we have to push through. And after you have self-awareness, that's when you can actually do something about whatever it is that you become self-aware about. If you're not self-aware about it, you don't have the option on a conscious level to make some kind of decision to dramatically change that ceiling and raise it. Until then, you're just gonna keep running into it. And it's a very unfortunate, repetitive cycle. To be clear, you have to define the cycle, okay? And this is what's important. There's usually like a time, there's usually like a set amount of variables or just things that continuously occur. There's like characteristics that you can easily look at and say like, yeah, I mean, that's definitely happening. And these are what enable you to have the definition. These are these are what create the definition and what allow you to see the cycle more clearly for what it is. It's just a repetitive circular process that you repeat again and again and again and again and again. And when you define that cycle and you see it for what it is, it's very easy to like break out of it. It's very easy easy to just, after you once again have the self-awareness and you look at it for what it is and you specify like, this is what happens at each one of these levels. And you just, you just look back in hindsight. There's that hindsight bias that occurs where I'm sure you've seen this in life. You see somebody do some stupid shit and you look at it after it already happened and you're like, how the fuck did that happen? Like, that's so easy to avoid. They could have just done this. That's what I'm trying to provide to you when you define the cycle. When you define the cycle, like you should look at what's going on and be like, yeah, that's pretty dumb. Like, why the fuck are we doing that? You know, like in hindsight, we could have done this, 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 and this. And this is what's most important. So after you define the cycle, you then want to find almost like, I can't believe I'm so dumb for repeating that cycle. You want that kind of conclusion. You know, you want to look at it and be like, what the fuck? Why, why do I keep doing that? And then this is where the solutions start to come in. And this is where, like I said, it doesn't happen when you're at the ceiling. The solutions typically happen along the way to the ceiling again, because you got to create that momentum. You got to have enough runway for the momentum to build up, perpetuate, and then slam through the ceiling if and when you get to that point again. This cycle of self-awareness, defining the cycle with the time, the variables, the characteristics of the cycle, and then implementing the solutions for the cycle. This becomes critical. It becomes a very simple game that I, I quite literally want you to look at like a game. I want you to go into this looking at it like, okay, here we go. Like we're on this part of the game now, you know? And every single time I reach this fucking boss, I just keep dying, you know? And I have to start the whole thing over again. That way, when you challenge yourself to overcoming this, you're thinking of it the entire duration of it happening, you know? The awareness along the way is what is critical. As the example of that 300K to 500K ceiling above, they do a weekly one hour call with me in a consulting deal that we have. I provide them continuous awareness and they now think with it all the time. So along the way, as these things are happening, nobody's like oblivious to the fact that the ceiling's approaching. And after they blow past the ceiling, it's very important to note, there's no defined ceiling that occurs above it. So in their case, once they smashed above the 500K a month ceiling, this ended up dramatically improving. They get to the point where they're above Above here, this becomes like, well, what happens next? You know, where is the next limit? Is there a next limit? What's the next level gonna be? There's usually a ceiling that occurs after the previously smashed ceiling. And you typically end up having the previous ceiling be the floor if and when you ever contract back down again. And you quite literally are just gonna repeat this same cycle again and again and again as you continue to level up. Because there's always gonna be something that typically holds you back. It's never as simple as you just continuously go up and to the right. You know, as we all know, as business owners, you know, there's there's contractions along the way that occur. As long as your trend is continuously up and to the right, that's what you generally want to experience throughout this process. So moral of the story, this pattern can be mental. This pattern can be a literal limitation occurring in different departments, not necessarily a specific thing that happens. Most of the time, to be fair, especially at lower levels of revenue, below 100K a month or, or even below 300K a month in some instances I've seen, it's a mental pattern. That's much more common at that level financially versus anything above 300K a month. And I mean this very literally. Anything above 300K a month, it's more of a, it'll come off as random, but there's still a clearly defined ceiling that it keeps coincidentally bouncing off of every time it gets up there. And 
as I mentioned, the same process regardless is something that you can repeat in order to overcome it. This is uh, a video that I hope helps you a lot if you're in this specific situation because, man, it can feel like hell to just repetitively repeat the same thing again and again and again and not be able to break through it. Uh, to be clear, I share lessons like this in my Inner Circle program uh, with those students. There are rich people trying to get a hell of a lot richer. We have people in there doing as low as like 20 to 50K a month. We have our highest level earners in there doing several million dollars a month. The median for the group is about 100 to 300K a month, give or take the member. Most of them are agency owners, guys who have info products. There's a few general businesses in there and well, a lot of high ticket businesses. Uh, simply put, if you're any of that and you wanna get to the point where you are surrounded by a group of people that are all on the same mission, trying to get a hell of a lot richer than they are right now, I would encourage that you join in. The link's below in the description. Check out all the details of it. Twice a month one-on-one -on -one calls, four times a year in-person masterminds, weekly group calls on lessons like this. It's every single thing just geared to be trained transparently sharing this is what it takes to get rich. So long story short, we'd love to have you a part of it if you're the right fit. Press that button below in the uh, description. And either way, guys, subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment. I'd uh, love to have you check out some of the other stuff. My entire channel is dedicated to trying to help you get to a million dollars a month. So enjoy the video and uh, talk soon. Bye.